All right, here's another problem, actually. I think I just can do another one. So um, we have the reaction of dinitrogen pentoxide. Uh, it's deco decomposing into nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. And it has been experimentally determined that the decomp reaction is first order. Okay. And so we can write out our rate law. Rate equals K times the concentration of N2O5 raised to the first power, so it's first order. Um, again, the rate law expression doesn't necessarily depend on the stoichiometry for the reaction. Okay? That, the stoichiom stoichiometry for the reaction comes in when we're doing the comparative rates, taking a rate for a reactant, comparing it to a product. The rate law is based on experimental data. So someone did the experiment and figured out that this is the rate law expression. Um, okay, so the concentration of N2O5 is going to change with respect to time. So that's saying delta N2O5 over delta T. And then we're going to use our stoichiometric coefficient. The concentration changes with respect to time according to this expression. Okay. And so we can actually relate the rate, this rate and this rate are the same number. And that's what the last problems were trying to show you. So uh, we can set this equal to K times N2 O5. All right. Um, let's say that we have a general uh, equation, general uh, reaction um, that follows the rate law. Rate equals K times the concentration of A. Or our reaction will be A decomposing into products. Okay. So just generalizing now. And we can then also say that the change in the concentration of A over the change in time is equal to the rate, which we know these rates are the same. And so delta A over delta T is going to be equal to K times the concentration of A. Now, um, one of the things that we, we are going to end up doing is determining what's called the integrated rate law. Okay, so the integrated signifies that there is some calculus that's going to happen. Uh, we're going to take some integrals. That's where that word's coming from. I'm not going to work through it right now. Um, but basically what we're going to do is apply some calculus and come up with our integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Um, you do not need to know how to derive this based on calculus. Okay. Um, but what we should end up with the natural log of the concentration of A at some time over the concentration initially is equal to minus k times t time. Okay. So this equation will allow us to predict the concentration of a reactant at any time t during the reaction. Okay. As long as we know an initial concentration and our rate constant.
So again, integrated rate laws, so they're going to be, we're going to see three different ones. Um, they're going to be pretty, uh, they're going to be equations that are going to allow us to determine concentration at any given time. So one of the things we're going to do with our integrated rate laws is rearrange these equations and write them in the form of y equals mx plus b. This is super convenient. It allows us to plot data and get a line instead of a curve when we have an exponent or a natural log. Um, and uh, we're going to do this for the first order reaction, a zero order reaction, and a second order reaction. So those refer to the, the superscripts that we're going to have uh, for our reactions. All right. So without deriving all of the uh, other um, rate laws, integrated rate laws, I will just write these out for you and um, show you for second order, we're going to have um, one over the concentration of A at time T equals K times T plus one over the initial concentration of A. And for zero order, we're going to have the concentration of A at some time T is equal to minus K times T plus the concentration of A at time zero, initially. And so again, our variables, we've got initial concentration A sub zero, concentration at another time. You may see A sub T or you may just see it as concentration of A we're getting the subscript T, um, the rate constant K, and time, which is lowercase t. And the way I've written out each of these expressions is in the form of y equals mx plus b. That's, that's on purpose. Yeah, one of the things you might be thinking to yourself are, do we have to memorize these equations? No, you do not. <laughs> Sigh of relief. Um, one thing you do, you, so this is what you're going to get on the exam. It's going to look very similar to this. I think that there is a sheet of equations. Okay. The iPad thing has confused me a little bit, but I think that everyone will get a sheet of equations. They will not be labeled 0, 1, or 2, first, first order, second order, or zero order. So you do need to be able to recognize which one is. We good? What time is this over? Good enough, it's Friday. I hope you. Yes. So the midterms in 11 days.